This is a gang member. This is a member of the world's largest gang. This is a police state. This is a police state without your tax dollars. Any questions? Thank you so great extra lights! Yeah! One more time! They got their riot shields, tear gas and black batons. This ain't protected storm, it's clear to see what side they're on. Cop Block's a decentralized network of a uh, diverse group of individuals that advocate police accountability and the dissemination of uh, learning one's rights, knowing how to safeguard their rights, and then uh, eventually connecting and collaborating with, with like-minded people in their own area to have a big impact, to a positive impact. Right, so right now I'm on the Cop Block Tour, just generic title, but uh, I've been on the road about a month. The, it's, a, it's a real quick-paced tour, about 4,000 miles, um, going to a couple dozen cities in total and uh, it's 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 a very short fast-paced tour compared to in the past I've done some cross-country tours in an RV with some friends under different projects called Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tours and with those projects we you know we'd spend like up to a week in each town do a lot of outreach maybe have a capstone event at the end of the week cover stories locally interview a lot of people and you know before we hit the road we spent months doing logistics ahead of time to identify point people and stories that we could put a help put a spotlight on but this tour was is is pretty fast paced it's uh, mainly the goals of it are to help connect people that are local that might not know of each other uh, before so that they can start working together going forward and then also to inject uh, the complete liberty idea into the conversation of police accountability so with these couple dozen stops, I pretty much, it's not a stop every day. Sometimes there's a day off where it's a work day or just a travel day. But uh, I left from New Hampshire, from Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, and then I went south to North Carolina and then I went west to Kansas City. And now I'm kind of going east, northeast, back to New Hampshire. So um, I was fortunate to have freekeen.com as uh, my featured sponsor. And then, you know, just folks who like the content that's being produced, they might donate to help keep me going. But uh, it's been really good thus far, you know, every stop's different based on the folks in each city or uh, kind of the vibe of what's going on, the, the tactics that have been tried or not tried, so it's been been uh, a good use of time, I think, for myself and been able to connect with some really good people. Uh, this is I'm actually near the, nearing the end of this cop block tour, so after Rochester or Syracuse, where a guy named Kurt Williams has started a Syracuse cop block mm -hmm. chapter. And, uh, and then after that, I'll be back in New Hampshire for the Liberty Forum, which is uh, an event in Nashua that has maybe 500 or so liberty oriented people that will show up for uh, sessions in a hotel. And uh, I'll be speaking about cop lock and be on a panel about non-political activism. So uh, just about done. So with uh, on the tour, since it is so fast paced, I don't have the time, uh, since I'm going solo as well, don't have the time to really edit the content I'm collecting. So I've been streaming content live to a Bamboozer channel, and then I've, the HD content that I capture, I've been putting on a YouTube channel. And then when I get off the road, I plan to edit that up into some videos and things. But so what I, what I try to do, uh, I think police accountability is a very timely conversation. A lot of people themselves have been, have negative interactions with police or know somebody who has. And, and so I think a lot of people are sort of disillusioned and looking for alternatives that can be pursued. So I try to inject in that conversation uh, the ideas of self-ownership, the non-aggression principle, and, and things like that. Um, I don't believe that police, policing as it's structured today can be fixed or that, you know, a band-aid solution will offer any remedy. I think the whole structure of it um, should be, should be seen for what it is, which is a course of monopoly that at the end of the day subsists on theft. So I don't believe uh, an institution that purports to protect people can ever do that when it's founded on theft. When they say everybody who lives in this area, you owe us money or else. And uh, so I, I just think since there's these perverse incentives, it's always going to fail. Mm -hmm. And so I try to go around and inject into that conversation sort of a complete liberty idea where if something's wrong for me or you, it can't become right for someone with a badge. And so, you know, I equate 
you know, the, the tactics that are used today to, you know, it's initiation of force. And there might be, and it's not necessarily an anti-police, like an individual, mm -hmm. I'm against all cops message. It's a, uh, we need to, uh, I believe we're each free to act so long as we're not initiating force. And so if there's a, a person who's a police employee who's led by good intentions, you know, I might, I might have a conversation and say, you know, we, obvi we have a similar end goal. We want to live in a safe, prosperous mm -hmm. community. But I suggested a different means to get there, one that relies on consensual interactions instead of coercive interactions. Every stop thus far on the tour has been different based on the folks in each town and the, and the um, community and, and uh, things like that. So my first stop was in Bridgeport, Connecticut. You know, I hooked up with uh, my buddy Angel who started a Connecticut cop block group out there and that was the most hostile interactions I've had thus far on the tour. And, you know, it was just us and, and his wife on the streets doing a lot of outreach, which was nice. But then, you know, when we did see a traffic stop, there was three squads who had pulled someone over and we just were out there on foot filming and right away they called back up and four squads came lights and sirens shining their spotlights at us threatening to take our cameras and essentially just being really have, uh, creating a hostile situation you know I, I'm sure they would have loved to put us in a cage and whatever so any anyway, after 20 minutes or so of that we ended up leaving on foot and two hours later we returned to get my vehicle and one of the police employees was sitting right there just idling behind my vehicle and they ticketed it, said it was blocking the sidewalk, which it was, and I have you know, video of that. But I engaged, we had a conversation with this guy for 20 more minutes and it was, it was very hostile and they followed me out of the city, followed me down the interstate, you know, and it was like, uh, you know, I can understand how some people view the police, their interactions almost like an occupied army because in, that, in those situations, who do you call, you know, I mean, I encourage people not to call 911, not to rely on these folks because a lot of times if a police employee comes, it can aggravate the situation and, uh, you know, course of rule that police have no duty to protect the individual. So th these are just, um, so that was one instance, very hostile, but we've all, I've also had other stops like in Nashville, I gave a sort of a know your rights presentation at Vanderbilt University and I would point to Detroit as being like a very good stop in terms of the objectives of this tour to try to connect people because some of the like folks who turned out among the couple dozen were the founders of Metro Detroit Cop Block and other folks were people who lived down the street who had essentially homesteaded 10 houses be between a few dozen people and they were doing urban farming and had animals and things like that and then there was another group of people that were like peaceful parenting, unschooling, so it was a real good uh, f forum for everybody to meet and then collaborate. In Kansas City there's a there's a KC, Missouri cop lock group, and they had been online before, but hadn't really met in person. And so they're planning activities, you know, to hit the streets. Someone could edit video. Someone could, you know, write things. So it's pretty interesting to see those kind of things come together. Yeah, one of the one example I'd point to was in Columbia, Missouri. Uh, it's, it's a town I had wanted to stop through a few years ago due to the uh, number of police, a uh, number of dogs being shot by police employees there. Something Davy has covered. Uh, extensively here in Rochester on Cop Block and his, his other sites but uh, so in Columbia there was a group of folks who got together they formed to keep Columbia free and they drew put a lot of attention on the use of uh, uh, SWAT teams to go in and raid houses for selling substances other people said were illicit and for shooting dogs and things so they they were so effective that there hasn't been a SWAT team used in town there since late to, since November 2011 on someone for like a drug related issue so that that was you know at least push that police state back a little bit but uh, one of my favorite examples of, of accountability is uh, happened in Key New Hampshire this past summer I mean this isn't a tour thing but it's a tactic that can be replicated and that was uh, after a friend of ours Derek J Freeman got uh, assaulted by a keen police employee fit and more we you know we had a lot of cameras out there that captured that so that was heavily documented but later that evening we went outside fit and more's house and uh, sang a song that was like very you know positive and friendly and then a num couple of us went to his neighbor's houses and said hey uh, like I I'd want to know if I lived next to someone who was aggressive and I just wanted to take a second to you know today uh, to let you know that today your neighbor fit more assaulted a somebody and it was uncalled for and here's a link to the video you can check it out yourself and you know that was pretty much it so uh, to me that was very effective because instead of saying the keen police department is in the wrong. We say no. This individual who acted was in the wrong. So that's something at Coplock we try to uh, promote, like holding individuals accountable for their actions and not just letting them get away with things and, and point to like a, a group of people. 
you know, if there was a, a corrupt, a heavy-handed police employee here in Rochester, uh, if, if it wasn't known where they live, let's say, but the home demonstration was something uh, that was desirable, I would just solicit that info because if it's not easily available, someone who sees that might have it and share it with you, like off the record, or perhaps someone who, who has skills in obtaining that information through electronic means might be willing to ascertain that for you as well. Nine of us actually were arrested in Manchester, New Hampshire, and uh, this was the summer of 2011. There had been, uh, about a year prior, there had been an individual who was beat up by four Manchester police employees outside of a bar, and uh, right away the chief said, oh, they, they didn't act in the wrong, and a few months later the state attorney general said, oh, it wasn't their best day, but we're not going to go after them. So soon after, myself and Adamo and a few dozen other folks went outside the the uh, Manchester gang's headquarters and we were uh, holding signs. I was trying to have conversations with police employees and some people were riding with chalk on the sidewalk and the walls and it wasn't until somebody uh, wrote on the police memorial you know area on this brick wall how many has Manch PD slain that some police employees came out and made some arrests eventually uh, kidnapping and caging nine of us and taking nine phones and cameras and they st my camera was stolen and claimed to have never been taken and stuff. So anyway, from that, uh, we, we spent a couple months in Manchester doing outreach because, you know, we, we, we think it's important not just to subject your, allow yourself to be subjected to uh, legal land, to court by, you know, just go in there and try to play by the rules because, you know, they, if, if you allow a, a group of people to create rules to then interpret rules, you know, they're always, their incentive is to side with themselves and their own actors. Uh, what everybody knows if it's your word against a, someone with a badge's word in legal land, they're often going to side with the latter. Mm -hmm. So we try to really work outside the court ahead of time to win in the court of public opinion to make known what's going on and, and who is actually the aggressor through documentation, video, and other things. So we spent a couple months in Manchester doing outreach. We had DVDs, like thousands of DVDs made up with Manchester related videos and other videos and distributed them. We, we did outreach like everywhere we could and a couple of the kids that ended up being uh, receiving a DVD, went to Manchester's West High School, mm -hmm. and uh, soon after, one of those students witnessed his friend be assaulted in the high school by the school liaison officer named Darren Murphy, and they, the school employees initially came up to that student who filmed and told him to delete the footage. Hi, my name's Frank Harrington. I go to West High School, and today I got assaulted by a cop. This is a really boring really video so far. You can always edit out. Freedom of the press. The U.S. citizen. I'm not going to the. You're crazy. You're crazy. This is, are you kidding me right now? Yeah, we're recording something. You're not recording it. How am I not supposed to be recording this? Are you thinking your head? Do you not know this is a freedom as a U.S. citizen in the world? Do you realize I could sue you for thousands and thousands of dollars right now for doing that? See, this is why I'm taping this right here. See this right here. This is why I'm taping that. Get out of here. Don't talk to her like that. Hey. Out of the way. Okay. I'm videotaping this. I have a freedom to do this. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I have one video. And things like that. He deleted a couple like other pictures and whatever else, but kept the footage. They later went to the mainstream news outlet in town who said, yeah, we're kind of interested. Come back another time. And then they found us. And uh, so we ran that video, the raw video that showed this kid essentially being slammed on the table, his head off the table because... He had taken his sister's purse as a joke in school. You know, they had already talked and had planned to give it back to her, and it was like pretty much a non-issue. But when the police employee told him he was going to be arrested, and the student swore about it, the police employee, I would say, overreacted and slammed him on the table. I mean, I know if I treated a kid like that, I'd be in the wrong, and people would want to hold me accountable mm -hmm. because this guy has a badge on. He was given a free pass by the school admin and and the police department, everything. So. The day after that incident, the demo called the police department in Manchester, and he called the school. And uh, for that, he was, you know, he, he identified himself as a demo Freeman from CopBlock.org, seeking comment. And uh, New Hampshire's what's called a two-party consent state, so the he ended up being charged with uh, three counts of felony wiretapping, which doesn't make sense because for it to be a felony, even it had to be a party 
like uh, independent of the conversation. It should have been a misdemeanor, if, if anything. But again, there's no victim. He was seeking accountability, so he sh he was actually doing something just. But um, so fast forward, he uh, he ended up having a court date for that and uh, a jury trial, and we had you know uh, 90 to 100 people in the court to support him and a lot of media. But uh, even so, he tried to make a jury nullification argument and point out that he was doing acting in the right, but. Uh, they ended up finding him guilty and uh, of three counts of felony wiretapping. So they event they essentially sentenced him to a year in a cage with nine months suspended. So he sat in Manchester's Valley Street Jail for three months this past fall, and then from the other two felony counts, he has uh, years hanging over his head if he uh, acts up. Essentially, it's it's really it's worded very vaguely. So he's uh, you know he faces and that's for the next five years. So he's essentially. Um, you know, living his life now, doing his thing, and, and uh, you know, recognizing that uh, how arbitrary, I guess, all this is, and, and uh, just trying to, I don't know, uh, be effective for himself and for, for people close. But uh, he is appealing the conviction. There's a, um, a lawyer in New Hampshire named Brandon Ross who's uh, representing him, and uh, it's supp supposed to be heard by New Hampshire's Supreme Court later in this in the mm -hmm. spring. Mm -hmm. So we'll see where that goes. But you know, again, I mean, I know he didn't do anything wrong, and everybody you know who can think with half a mind. So you know, whatever they do, um, you know, we'll see where it goes. A lot of the backstory and related videos are, can be found at copblock.org/freeademo. That's A D E M O. But uh, I would just say, I mean, if people want to help him, I would just encourage them to uh, speak out against in injustices they see in their area. I mean, mm -hmm. this can't just be a demo doing something or me or Davey or the person watching. It's got to be everybody. You know, the more good people step up and work together, you know, then th the better off we'll be and the sooner off we'll get we'll get to the, uh, you know, the kind of community we'll, we want to live in. You know, one that's, for me, absent this uh, institutionalized violence that we see today. I mean, police brutality and these double standards will continue to happen. You know, there's definitely not a lack of content if you look at coplock.org or any of these other outlets, you'll see that. But um, so the question is, how do we mitigate that? And to me, it's to strike the root and just withdraw your tacit consent for the whole idea that some people have a right to uh, initiate force. Hopefully, there, maybe there's some police employees that watch this. I'd encourage them to act according to their conscience. You know, they might be, again, well-intentioned, but uh, recognize that, and I'm sure they know even better than myself, or uh, you know, uh, the perverse incentives that exist in that institution. And you know, not speaking out only allows for for bad things to continue. And you know, if if the police employee does a good job, people would uh, there's a demand for safety and security. People would voluntarily hire them, and then they wouldn't have to worry about enforcing things they don't morally agree with, or that pe uh, or work with colleagues that are heavy-handed or brutal. So along that line, we made a welcome Leo's page on cop block that I, I hope uh, police employees check out and you know we have a friend who after 11 years as a cop in New Hampshire quit his job and because of the drug war he couldn't uh, couldn't continue to put people in cages for that so I hope to see more of that going forward.